Learn these tricks and stop mashing now. Today, we're gonna learn about two techniques that are secretly giving a lot of players trouble with their playthrough. These techniques are known as buffering and negative edge. And these are the prime culprits of, I didn't press that button. Now, what are these two things exactly and how can we turn them from possible disadvantages to a huge advantage? I put in the effort to timestamp this video. So if you are only interested in the advanced techniques, then feel free to skip to that portion and I won't hold it against you. I appreciate your watch no matter the time spent. Now let's get to it. Let's start with buffering. Buffering is a mechanic that stores a button input you perform while another action is happening and then executes it on the earliest frame possible. Now, players coming from MASH-friendly games can think this is the worst mechanic ever, since it often locks them into actions they were mashing the button for at one point, but then they see an attack coming and try to replace it with a roll later. This is what winds up with the what the fuck I rolled there situations. Now, don't take this strictly as a bad thing. These mechanics are there for a reason. They exist in many games and I swear it's not just from soft trying to screw you over. As a Street Fighter player, I learned that mashing is one of the worst ways to time things. If you're finding yourself in the habit of pressing a button three or more times with every action, then you absolutely need to get yourself out of it. Admittedly, Elden Ring is very loose with its buffer. These insanely high buffer windows very much punish players going wild on their controllers and reward those patient enough to analyze the situation toward the end of their wake up and stick to one move. If you're near the end of your getup and you see an attack coming your way, now now is your time to input the dodge. But if you were wildly mashing attack ahead of time, then you are going to be stuck committed to that vulnerable attack option. Now, why does this exist? Seems like nothing but a hindrance, right? Although you may find it frustrating in certain situations, this buffer has saved you many times. Rolls provide instantaneous invincibility from the very first frame of animation. Because of this buffer, we are able to queue up this action during knockdown and prevent being otherwise infinitely stunned by our opponents. Without the buffer, you would suffer. While recovering, you would need to input your roll frame perfect. That is precisely 1 60th of a second. Miss that 1 60th of a second timing and you eat that damage. This opportunity to safely recover from dangerous situations does not only exist with bosses, but in player versus player as well. With the buffer gone, the optimal strategy in any 1v1 would be to just chain heavies post knockdown until death. Now enough with why buffering exists. What are some advanced techniques that can use this system to our advantage? Buffered crouch is the absolute star of the show here, and if there were any techniques I'd want you to learn over the others, it'd be this one. Colossal Greatsword is the best possible example of a single attack making the entire weapon. You may have equipped this weapon, swung it around a few times, and just left with the impression, wow, this is trash. I am never going to hit anybody with these moves. And you're right. The default light and heavy attacks for Greatsword are awful. Even after the recent buff to Colossal Weapon Speed, these attacks feel like an eternity to get out. But how about having access to an R1 just as fast as lighter weapons can chain into itself, infinitely stunlocking certain enemies to death, and is one of the absolute best roll catchers in PvP. This move right here is what makes the Colossal Greatsword, and buffering is what makes the motion of these chains so easily possible. Instead of crouching, doing the attack, waiting for the animation to end, timing your crouch again, and timing your attack again, press crouch during the animation of your attack so that your character is already queued to perform your crouch as early as possible. Then, instead of timing two different inputs, you only have to time one. After a while, you get the hang of it. But if you need additional help timing the attack, you can always hold forward so you can react to your character walking. Once you see their legs move, that's the clear sign that you can attack without accidentally performing something else. This additional visual aid can do leaps and bounds with working on your timing for these moves. The same logic applies to buffered backstep, and this can be an amazing technique to break out in duels or invasions. Buffered backstep allows you to continue pressure after landing a hit and chase down any rolls your opponent might be planning on doing. S-Dock is an amazing example of this due to its backstep giving a load of forward momentum. This might look difficult to do, since you need to backstep in the direction of your enemy, but the timing on these buffer windows is very generous. Again, we can simplify this three button input to only one input due to this buffer. Instead of end animation, backstep, quick turn away, quick turn back, attack. God damn, that is a lot to say. All we have to do is press dodge in the middle of the animation of our attack. Make sure that your analog stick is in neutral position while doing this so that you don't accidentally get a roll. As you can see here, even when I activate this super early, the backstep still comes comes out. All right, so now since we know the backstep is cued to come out no matter what when we do that, all we have to do is hold backward. Bam. 
you just did a reverse back step. Once you have this motion down, you can graduate to throwing an attack in there and you're set. Something important to note before we talk about buffered running attacks are weapon motion values. You likely have already noticed that your jumping attacks do much more damage than your regular attacks, for instance. But this doesn't only apply to jumps. This jumping multiplier is due to its higher motion value, and these values are secretly assigned to every different attack in the game. Why was this so important to talk about prior to buffered running attacks? As we can see here, running R2s have an insane motion value compared to that of crouching, backstep, and even standing R1s. And with certain weapons, weaving in instantaneous running heavies can be very viable when using buffering. Simply hold circle. Wait, I can't get my fingers to work. Simply hold circle through the later half of your attack. Since you're holding circle, your character is instantly ready to break into a run with no travel time. If you get good at this timing, you can have certain running motions feel like they're coming out as quick as any other motion. Now don't worry about these motion values too much and base all of your decisions off what has the highest number. Like we showed with our crouching examples, some moves are good just from the movements tied to them and not necessarily because they will do the most damage. As we can see here with Colossal Greatsword, the crouching R1 only has a value of 107, while the running R2 has a value of 138. Does this mean we're going to want to buffer a running heavy after every attack? Hell no. In most situations, we value the speed and convenience of this crouch attack more than anything. The final technique here is not taking advantage of the fact that we have a buffer, but taking advantage of the fact that other players have and will use that buffer. There are many new players to the scene, and it is very easy to panic when knocked down against real players. Most players in this situation are terrified you are going to attack them as soon as they get up, and they are hammering on their controller to avoid this. They have had a roll buffered onto their character for a while. They are destined to be invincible from frame one. This is why a majority of the time it is not smart to try to attack a player as soon as they get up. Now I know they visually look very vulnerable and it just seems like a juicy, juicy free hit for you. But if you attack them in this state, you are just going to whiff and hit nothing. Instead, since you know they are queuing up a roll, you know. You definitely know. You can bait this out by walking close to them and making them think you're going to attack by putting pressure on them. Then intentionally delay your attack in order to catch the ending frames of their role where they are actually vulnerable. Now, I mentioned a mechanic called negative edge as another offender of missed inputs at the beginning of the video. We can briefly talk about this since it's not a very advanced system. Negative edge is a system that allows the game to count the release of a button as its own input instead of just the press. This mechanic is typically implemented in fighting games, but interestingly enough, Elden Ring has negative edge applied to solely one button, and that button is dodge. This is due to roll and run being assigned on the same button, so the game needs to wait for your release of the button in order to deem if you're attempting to roll or if you're trying to start a run. Many of you may not have noticed this before since you're used to game inputs registering instantly on button press, but try it for yourself. Slowly press the roll button and as long as you let go before the run initiates, your roll will come out extremely late. The system doesn't have any advanced techniques tied to it that I know of, so it's a bit less complex, but it's still nice to be aware of since this certainly can run players into situations where they may have pressed down on their dodge button in time to roll an attack, but the game only cared about if the button came up. Even a few frame difference between your thumb coming up and an attack landing can make a huge difference. Really, the only way to counteract this is to slide your thumb off roll as quickly as possible. Don't be lax, don't linger on it or hesitate, just in and out, just sonic speed on that button. That's about all I got for now. I hope this was able to help some of you guys, especially the newer players. As always, appreciate the watch. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Have a wonderful rest of your day.